All right, just a second, but it looks like uh, looks like we're live. So awesome, man. Well, hey, thank you again for coming on here and doing this. It's going to be so fun. Uh, for, for those of you that don't know Bobby Stocks, I'm not even sure how you introduce a guy like Bobby. Uh, I'm just going to go with Ad Agency <laughs> Hustle is the main thing. I mean, obviously, Bobby has a, a, a done-for-you agency that's just crushing. Got several courses uh, and things as well. So um, Bobby is definitely somebody that you should connect with. I've learned so much from Bobby over the course of 2017 and 2018. Uh, being in ad agency hustle mastermind and being a part of that and and just being in the network you know it's like winners attract winners and and it's just been awesome being around you and uh the people that you surround yourself with is is great likewise likewise um as you're coming on here uh today what we're giving away is a done for you book package i totally meant to grab this book One second, I should it's done for you book package Not yeah, I should have, should have had this ready, but here's like an example of what it looks like. Uh, so this is the one we did with Glenda Meyer out in San Diego. Um, so it's a book that we've written. It's all completely done. And, uh, and we just basically take it, customize it for you, send you your physical copies. And now you're an author, right? You're going to get your own ISBN number. Um, you can, you know, order more copies of this as you, as you run out. But super powerful to have a book. Like the one Bobby's going to come out with next year called the Donahue Method. I can't wait to <laughs> can't wait to read it. Um, yeah, those book strategies are great. I mean, you know, it's like you pretty much lock down a deal if you hand somebody a book instead of a business card. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's been cool getting some of the feedback just so people talking about you know that like people actually read the book right. That's the difference between having a physical book and an ebook is like nobody reads an ebook, but people will not throw away an e a physical book for whatever reason. So. Um, right. If you want to win that, all you need to do is comment one to a hundred down in the comments below. And uh, after Bobby gives us his tip around team building and how to just surround yourself with all stars, we're going to use the random number generator like normal and we'll, uh, we'll pick a winner. So uh, what up, Bill? What up, Nick? Yosef, John? I see a bunch of guys in here. Uh, so appreciate you guys for all being here. Um, awesome, man. You want to get into your tip? Yeah. Um, so when you asked me to do this, I was, you know, there's a, obviously a million different things we can talk about as far as marketing and positioning and all that stuff. But um, if I really look at what's helped me uh, in the digital marketing space build um, so quickly, once I really started focusing on this, it was, it was team building um, and, and just uh, uh, leadership principles. Um, so I've been in a leadership role for a long time. Uh, I first took over a, a, a country club as head chef and I had, you know, 20 some people when I was 21 years old. I was there for 10 years before I moved into actually building businesses. Um, and, you know, I did everything wrong. <laughs> I've done everything wrong under the sun when it comes to hiring, firing or not firing, partying with, my, with, with people that, that worked for me, uh, you name it. Um, and this time around, uh, we, we really like hit a home run with how to build effective teams and how to also like really attract people that you want to partner with. Um, so one of the tips is, cause there's a lot of stuff in that, but it, it really comes down to uh, communication and back in, um, back in 2000, uh, 2013, I, um, I had been engaged for a number of years, and this is when I was just starting to get into the digital marketing space. Um, and our, our wedding got, we call our wedding off, right? So we had everything booked out. We had, you know, dozens of um, plane tickets from family from California that was flying out. We had all this stuff done, right? And we were just at each other like this, every day at each other. Um, and I think, you know, I know for me, I was like, man, like, I can't, I can't imagine what it's going to be like having to go through this for the next who knows how long, right? And um, so we decided to, to, to see a couple's therapist. It was basically like, screw it. You know, at this point, what do we have to lose? We go in there, um, we sit down, 40 minutes into our first session, this guy says we need to call our wedding off. And that if we get married, it'll actually sink our relationship. Um, so when we left, you know, I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, 
fuck it, let's just get married. We get divorced later on. You know, it's how many people are divorced these days, right? <laughs> In my mind, I was like, that seems somehow easier yeah. than having to admit the failure, right? And um, tell everybody, like, hey, this isn't working and we're going to call everything off. Um, so we ended up we, we ended up doing the right thing. We called everything off, and we went into, you know, exploring what was what was wrong with our relationship. And we were introduced to um, something that's called Imago Dialogue. So that's spelled I M A G O Imago Dialogue, and it's by a therapist named Dr. Harville Hendricks. And Harville Hendricks is a relationship therapist that is you know very wide known in that in that industry. And oddly enough, Imago Dialogue has been not only the game changer for my um, uh, relationship with my wife, you know, we went through this, it fixed our relationship in about 60 days. We ended up putting the wedding back on and totally, total game changer, like changed everything, been happily married for five years. We still use this, but we've really started to use this in our business once we realized how important it was. So basically, what what Imago uh, Dialogue does is it helps break down uh, barriers. It helps break down walls between communication. And if you want to build it, and this is like it does not matter. I've had construction fencing companies. Like I've seen this across the board, especially when you're in like partnerships or you have high level. If you want high level people to be working on your thing. You better be making sure that they're happy, right? And what, you know, I always say this about clients. A silent client is not a happy client, right? In a relationship, if, if your partner's being silent or if there isn't communication about what's going on, um, you know, what's the elephant in the middle of the room, there's always things going on that are, that are being uh, unspoken, right? Mm -hmm. And when unspoken things aren't, consistently brought out and there isn't a space created where you, your partners, your employees can share that about how they feel, what are their judgments about different things that are happening, how that affects them. And the thing that typically happens and I see a lot of, um, I see a lot of people in charge do is that they, uh, and this is what you see in relationships, is they defend, right? So if we were uh, working together and you said, hey, Bobby, um, you know, I, I'm, lately I've been feeling really angry because I judge that, um, you know, I haven't been getting the credit that I deserve. And I feel that way because the other day I saw you do this. And when you did that, here's how I felt, right? So typically in a, in a, in a relationship, even a, um, a work relationship, most people will then defend. I might say, Oh, well, that's all wrong. Like I'm telling you, like the other, when I was doing that, I had, you know, and, and I'll, I'll go right into this defense mode, right? And what that creates is you may feel like you're crazy. You may be like, man, am I like, I swear I feel crazy. Like I keep having this experience with this person, but they keep giving me all these logical reasons and selling me on why that's not true. And this is why in relationships, people will feel crazy. So a good example of a Mago dialogue would be, you tell me all that stuff, how you're feeling, and then I repeat it back to you. So instead of trying to defend why what you're feeling is wrong, I would just say, okay, Nick, I got that. So what I heard you say is that the other day, you felt this when you saw me do this, and you've been judging that, you know, every time I do this, that, that you know, you feel this way. Is that right? Is there anything else? And you might say, you know, yeah, this all kind of stems back from like five months ago when you did X, Y, Z, right? Because this is how, this is how relationships break down. They break down because we build up stories, mm -hmm. you know, and the stories are never a hundred percent true. They're always filled in by our own shit. So, you know, you go through this process and I repeat back again, and at the end of when you when I say is there anything else and you say no, that's it. I say man, Nick, that makes sense. To me, that makes sense. If I was in your shoes and I saw this 
I saw that, I saw this, I would totally think that you that you were up to that, that I was up to that for you. It makes complete sense. Is there anything that you need from me so that moving forward, you don't feel like that I'm undervaluing that valuing you? And you would say, yeah, you know, I think what I need is, is this, right? So, because the, the point is, it's not the, me defending whether, like, I was actually doing that or not. Like, it doesn't actually matter, right? None of that shit matters. That's all surface level stuff. And the stuff that breaks relationships down are always the things that are, not, are going unsaid. And so we do this actually in our team. Like, we had a really powerful session the other day with all of our, our C-level team. We sat around and we cleared the shit out. Um, I've been doing this practice with a, a men's group that I go to for the last six years. We call, it, uh, we call it a clearing. And basically, when we have a problem with each other, I'll say, hey, Nick, uh, are, you, are you open to having a clearing with me? And you might be like in a bad mood that day, and you say, no, I don't want to do a clearing today. And I'm like, that's cool. And then the next time I say, hey, Nick, are you open to a clearing today? And you'll say, yeah. And I ha we have to step up in each other's faces, and I have to say, I have a problem with you. Here's the problem. This is how I feel, and this is why I judge. Like, this is, this is my judgment, right? And it's important to use that word, judgment, because when I think somebody's doing something, it's only a judgment. Like, they may not actually do that. And this is what – this happens to me all the time. I'm, I'm a hothead. I can be like – I think somebody's out to get me, and I swear, like, I think they're, like, fucking in their evil lair over there, thinking about me, plotting shit, and they're just, like, probably sitting in a onesie, like, drinking a hot cup of cocoa. <laughs> like, not even thinking about me, not planning any shit or anything like that. And, you know, none of us are perfect, but I, I, I will say that in building teams – and attracting high level teams. Because what happens is when you have this relationship with your team, like it doesn't, doesn't matter what level they are. Like VAs, it, it's the, they're human beings, right? The same thing, what happens is they start to talk about their experience in your company. And when they start to talk about your experience in your company, what I've learned is the highest level people, they don't just want money. They want a, they want a good experience every day in what they're doing, right? Um, so it's like if you want to if you want to really make money and you want to like create leverage for yourself, you want to expand and you want to make your brand better, your positioning better, all that stuff. Um, Amago dial dialogue, like I get some of this. It's like I'm getting from my mom. My mom just got here. Um, she flew in from Tampa and she hands me this book on emotional intelligence. Um, if it, it's, it was written by a Harvard guy. It says emotional intelligence is the number one factor for building business leadership, right? And what is emotional intelligence? All it is is understanding your feelings. Am I feeling happy? Am I feeling sad? Am I mad, right? It's crazy, like, when you really look at it, the majority of our population doesn't understand what they're feeling and they'll say this person makes me feel like I'm fucking undervalued and this that and the other and that's a judgment I judge that this person's you know thinks this way of me it's not a feeling you know feelings are very cut and dry it's like I'm afraid I'm angry I'm mad and when you get down to your feelings it's much easier to clear away what's not real look at the facts and in business it's all about I have fear, discomfort, what's the facts? Let me make decisions based off of the facts and move through that, right? The faster you can find the facts, find the real data, move the fear out of the way and move through, the quicker you're gonna be able to make good decisions, right? And we all know, you know, the ROI between good, a good decision and a bad decision. It's make or break, right? So. I mean, I think there's a lot of guys out there that their businesses have gone under and the, the, the stuff piles up on them to such an extent that they don't know how to get out, right? They, they just don't know how to get out at that point.
um, but it's always the same process. So that's my tip on team building. Um, if so if you want to get better at uh, knowing yourself, or if you got a crazy relationship, <laughs> or if you don't have a crazy relationship and you want to take any relationship to the next level, definitely check out Imago Dialogue by Dr. Harwell Hendricks. You've been using it in everything for years. So love that. I'm just here fighting with my cat. I'm gonna move him out of the way. <clears throat> oh damn, yeah. Oh, do man, he always tries to get right in the mix when I'm getting on video, I swear every time. That's how my mom he just lays out there. Yeah, my mom's cat wants to walk across the keyboard. Yeah, that's exactly what you've been trying to do. I've been here off to the side trying to hold him back for the last one minute. <laughs> what can you do? That's awesome. If, if people want to learn about the Imago, can they just look that up? Is that something available online? Yeah, it, it's super popular Like when it comes to you know um, relationship stuff, though probably most people have never heard of it. But it's, it's I-M-A-G-O and then dialogue. He's got a ton of books. Him and his wife wrote it. Uh, they've been in, you know, I think they've been pumping out books for like 20 plus years on relationship building. But wow. it's a super, super simple process. Um, takes about five minutes and it's not complicated, but the amount of, the difference that it makes for the input that you have to do is like mind blowing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know you've talked before about it, especially just uh, with, you know, between you and Rachel's relationship of how much of an impact that that made, so that's cool to hear you're doing the same same thing in your business. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it's just like it's the same stuff, right? It's just relate, especially you know. You, I, I've always thought you treat a business like a like a business is like a family. You know, it's a living, breathing family of things, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, we all know what happens to dictatorships. They go under. For sure. So. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for hopping on here. If, hey, yeah, if, somebody, for if, if somebody's trying to smoke cigars for the first time, what's a good one to start with? Um, I give the same answer I always do. If you've never smoked a cigar, start out smoking acid cigars from Drew Estate because they got a little flavor to them, but it's not a, it's not a flavored cigar, meaning that it's like artificial flavors. They infuse them and stuff like that. That's a good cigar to start out with. Awesome.